Turbotech Juno 66 upgrade turns your Juno 6 or 60 into a powerful new synthesizer with a lot of exciting additional features. It adds MIDI in an output. Portamento, a fully polyphonic portamento with adjustable speed and behavior. It adds additional play modes. Beside the 6 voice polyphonic mode you get a duophonic mode and two monophonic modes, both layering oscillators to get hypersaw and hypersquare waves. The fatness is of course adjustable. Two chord memory modes let you assign chords with up to six notes to keys on the keyboard, transpose them, play them, sequence them. A powerful built-in sequencer can be clocked from different sources. Sequences can include ties and breaks. Two additional filter LFOs. A triangular and a sample and hold style LFO. Organic detuning turns your clean sounding DCO based Juno into a VCO like living organism. And of course, there's lots more. In my opinion, one of the most exciting features of the Juno 66 is Portamento. Using the Porta switch when the arpeggiator is turned off lets you turn on Portamento and choose between two different Portamento speeds. The Portamento is fully polyphonic and works in all play modes. Both speed settings are completely user definable by MIDI or via an internal configuration menu. Portamento can be chosen to have a constant speed or constant time behavior. Constant time will give you an identical glide time no matter how far two notes are apart from each other. Constant speed, on the other hand, spends a constant amount of time between each semiton. Beside the original 6 voice polyphonic mode, five new play modes are accessible with the Juno 66. By using the mode switch while the arpeggiator is turned off, you can select between poly, mono A and chord memory modes. By pressing the key transpose button, you can select a second set, duophonic, a different monophonic mode and polychord. The duophonic mode layers three slightly detuned oscillators to create a thicker sound. The resulting waveform is often referred to as supersaw or supersquare. You can adjust the amount of fatness by either using MIDI controller values or an internal configuration menu. Two monophonic modes are available. Both layer all six oscillators and detune them to create a hypersaw or hypersquare waveform. The fatness is of course adjustable. While Mono A re-triggers the envelope on each key press, Mono B does not if you play the ghetto. Chord Memory lets you define a chord consisting up to six notes and transpose it using the keyboard. To record a new chord, play it. Hold key transpose until it starts blinking, then press key transpose again. The chord is now saved and can be played.
Polychord lets you assign an individual chord to each key on the keyboard. There are no limits here. Theoretically, you could completely redefine each key on the keyboard. To record a chord, play it. Hold key transpose until it starts blinking. Then press the key you want the chord assigned to. You can now play it. I already saved some other chords on the other keys. The Juno 66 includes a powerful sequencer called Power Arp. You can record a sequence including breaks and note length information. To play the sequence, the internal arpeggiator clock, an external trigger, MIDI trigger or MIDI clock with an adjustable divider can be used. To record a new sequence, press the key transpose button, then while still pressing it turn on the arpeggiator. The light is now blinking to indicate it is waiting for a new sequence. Enter a sequence using the keyboard. You can add breaks by pressing hold or using an external pedal. Pressing hold while a key is pressed extends the duration of said note by one step. The sequence can be transposed using the keyboard. It can also be shifted forward and backward using the two uppermost keys. By using the ARP switches you can select the direction the sequence is playing. Forward, backward and ping pong. And by using the range switch you can automatically transpose the sequence over two octaves, just like the normal arpeggiator. Set the range to 3 and power up is in random mode. Here the sequence is played in a random order and you can select between three different random behaviors by using the mode switch. Playback is not restricted to a certain play mode, which means you can also play chords. Here's an example of the power up playing a sequence in polychord mode. Some keys have chords, others have single notes assigned to. The Juno 66 can receive MIDI data on a channel of your choice or an Omni mode. It features two output channels with different note information, as played and as sounds. As played outputs the notes you play on the keyboard. As sounds on the other hand outputs the notes you hear, including chords in chord memory mode, arpeggiator and sequencer data. For both channels the MIDI channel can be chosen or they can be switched off. There are two ways you can trigger the arpeggiator and power up sequencer using MIDI. You can use a MIDI note to trigger the next step, or use the MIDI clock with an adjustable divider. The divider can be adjusted using MIDI controller data or the internal config menu. When changing the clock divider, the Juno 66 will always stay in sync. Almost all Juno 66 parameters are MIDI controllable. Additionally, you can control the Juno bender and filter cutoff.
The Juno 66 comes with two additional filter LFOs, a sample and hold style LFO and a triangular LFO. The sample and hold style LFO can be clocked using the internal ARP clock, external trigger, MIDI trigger or MIDI clock. You can set the amount and the clock divider using a MIDI controller or the config menu. A triangular LFO can be used simultaneously. You can control the amount as well as the speed. High filter modulation frequencies leading to voice-like sounds are possible. Being a DCO-based synthesizer, the Juno's pitch is very perfect as compared to VCO-based synthesizers. While such a behavior is often desired, it lacks the organic feeling of slightly detuned living analog oscillators. Juno 66 can emulate such a behavior by slightly detuning the oscillators. You can set the amount from a subtle to a very strong detuning. At the highest setting, spooky experimental sounds are made possible. This video only covers some of the basic features, but there's more. You can select between alternative non-equal tempered scales, change a lot of parameters using MIDI, control pitch bend and there are many shortcuts and tricks.